I stumbled on the Excel Demi Data Pivot practice. They gave you an Excel worksheet with a sale amount per client, per region, per day, per month, per year, to perform all kinds of aggregations using the Excel Pivot table. You drag and drop fields to some amounts per client per year or whatever custom financial analyst requests. It's intuitive and dynamic to do in Excel, but I'm too lazy to copy pivot tables plus drag and drop fields across multiple Excel files. In this video, we automate this by creating aggregated pivot tables with pandas, manipulating those tables by slicing and dicing through them, and plotting the values in a live streamlit web app. Download the Excel Demi file into a data folder. Open your favorite IDE, link it to your Python environment, then install pandas to manipulate spreadsheet data. Also open PyExcel to open Excel files with pandas. I use Plotly and Streamly to visualize the data live in a web app, but you're free to practice with whatever combo like Matplotlib or Collab Notebook. Import the pandas library and load the Excel file using the read Excel method. I don't know why the first cell doesn't start on the top left corner, so tell pandas to skip the first three rows and read from columns B to H so it loads the correct content. I parse the year as a string, compute a new tax column by 5% the sales amount, then display the data frame. From ABC Corporation in 2019 to Titan Industries in 2022, this sales and tax data is ready to be summed, averaged, first quantile, by client, by year, by quarter, all at the same time. Which is the highest earning company? In Excel, you insert a pivot table into your worksheet, group all clients into rows, and choose the amount as values to aggregate per client. There is a drop-down menu to set the aggregation function as the sum, the count, or the average. Unfortunately, no first quantile. That's a custom calculation, which is easier to do in Python, I'll, I'll show you later in the video. Finally, you sort the table by amount values for the answer. Yeah. Pandas has the same interface as the Excel pivot table. To access it, you process the input data frame with the pivot table method. The index argument will be the rows of the pivot table. The amount columns are the values to aggregate on. Then you aggregate those values by summing them and order the index of clients alphabetically. If you display the results by descending summed amounts, you will find out the sole company is the highest earner. But I want to know how bad the ABC Corporation is. Your pivot table has all client categories as labels in the index. You have the power to query rows by the client label using the lock selector. Then you retrieve the sum of sales by calling the item method on the resulting series. I pass the whole result to a Streamlit metric KPI. That's a good start for my financial dashboard. How about visualizing the sales of several competing companies? First method, use an array of labels to identify multiple corporations. Second way, since the index is alphabetically sorted, you can slice the data frame rows from letter A to E. Third solution, pass a boolean mask of the same size as the index, where a false argument hides the row position and true leaves it in. Even more custom, build an anonymous function to create a mask from the client's index. For example, hide labels that do not end with the company word. My eyes hurt from reading so many tables of figures. I prefer building a Plotly Express bar chart to display the sum of sales per client index. If you don't specify the x-axis, the index generally takes the role of the axis. But I'm not sure all charting libraries do this. So if an issue happens, extract the index into a new column with the reset index method and use the column as your new x-axis specification. Selection by label is a powerful optimized tool to slice through the data frame. But this is only scratching the icing of the cake. We can cut deeper into the cake by adding more layers. Did ABC Corporation perform the worst every year? I would like to know by splitting the sales performance by year for each client. This is achieved in Excel pivot tables by moving the year column under the rows menu. 
it creates a collapsible row of a year which opens into a group of clients aggregated per year. The same operation is accomplished in Pandas by extending the index argument into an array of column names. In this example, the pivot table becomes a data frame with a two-layer deep index. It is first indexed by year, then by client under each year. I like to imagine this as a collection of years, each year pointing to a data frame of client index. To request the performance of ABC Corporation in 2019, you first select the level at the foremost left, which is year 2019. This returns a data frame with a client index to manipulate. To go deeper, query the company you are interested in. Instead of two consecutive lock, put both query levels in a tuple as the first coordinate of the lock method. This will properly query the 2019 ABC Corporation role. Then I recommend adding the second coordinate, the selection by column index, even if it's to select all columns with the colon character. Because some crazy situations are coming later in the video and they will break your mind if you are not adding a column identifier. The slicing by label is still available, but a little more limited. Like slicing through the year index or a range between a combination of year and client is still possible. But how about selecting all ABC Corporation rows, all being locked behind the year index? Well, Pandas has a special knife to slice deep levels. The lock operator accepts a multi index knife called Pandas Index Slice which you store in a shorter name because code length does matter a little. Each slicing argument in IDX matches the level dimension you act on. For example, IDX of colon and ABC Corporation will slice all years for the chosen ABC Corporation. And the slice 2019 to 2020 with companies A to E will slice each level independently. It gets even better. All selection by label techniques from the first part of the video are available in Index Slice. It accepts slicing by Boolean masks and callables for sick indexing ideas like selecting all corporation rows for even years. You can add more levels to your pivot table, like the month and the quarter. It is still a matter of adding coordinates to your IDX methods row indexer. A lot of charting libraries don't behave very well with multi-level indexes, so when you are done with slicing and dicing your data frame, you can reset the index into column names that Plotly Express can manipulate. Create a bar chart with the provided data frame, where X is the year, Y is the aggregated amount, and the color is given by the label of the client. This video is not sponsored by Metosheets. That's just a free plug of mine because they released a streaming plugin a few months ago and I thought it was super cool. If all this Python, Pandas, slicing, pivoting, dicing seem a hassle, you can import the Excel file in a new Metosheet spreadsheet to manipulate it with an Excel-like interface. And all operations will map to Pandas code to reuse in your own code or on future Metosheet worksheets. They even have Mito AI, an AI tool that generates Metosheet Pandas code to analyze your data frame with you. A bit like Pandas AI, which I made a video about a year ago. Maybe I should make a video to compare those two, like tell me what you think in the comments below. How about summing the amount and computing the average tax by client at the same time? With Pivot Table, you can extend the index argument to build a hierarchical, 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 how do you pronounce this? Index of row groups. You can do the same for the values and the aggregate function argument. This will split the data frame columns into a multi level column group with the aggregated function on the first level and the combined values on the second level. What is the sum of sales amount and average tax paid by Bridges Company in the first quarter of 2020? Multi-level column indexing works like multi-level row indexing. In your lock method, use a tuple to identify all levels for your row selection and another tuple to specify all levels for your column selection. Dicing through a range or a list of rows and column values is possible. 
everything about Pandas Index Slicer still holds. IDX works over both the row and column index. Here are all corporations in the first and last quarters of 2020, with the sum of sales and the first quantile of tax. To flex over all your colleagues, build a boolean mask of rows with a sum of tax over $1 million and keep a filter over the first and last quarter of year 2020. That way, you get all companies that paid way too much tax during the pandemic in around 10 lines of code. But before that, here's a plug to the Pandas documentation. I greatly invite you to sit by your workstation and practice with the Pandas Advanced Multi-Index and the Reshaping and Pivot Table Guide. This is the only way to train your multi-dimensional pivotal data analyst muscles. If you are operating on multi-level indexes, you use the stack method to transpose a multi-level column into a multi-level index, just like you would stack a fallen pile of books. Then reset the index and pass all necessary arguments into a plotly expressed bar chart. It's a little different from the melt method you see in this next video, where I build a streamlit dashboard over a wide form data frame. I'll see you there. Bye!